Welcome back, Blade fans. That's what we like to say around here because you're all Blade fans as far as I'm concerned. That's why you're visiting the channel and other channels and collecting knives, using knives, um, having a great time with them in this really wonderful knife community. I've met a lot of uh, great folks, uh, including many of you. And uh, today's theme is, and I've been picking themes lately because uh, we're going to get back to individual knives. I got a bunch of stuff coming in. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be different. Probably some haven't been reviewed before. I don't know. At any rate, um, entitling this little episode Forgotten We Knives. And you may disagree with me because you may have one of these and it's one of your favorite and it's, you haven't forgotten it at all. But I feel that these particular five require a little more respect and maybe recognition. And I'm going to start with one that's probably the sleeper of the whole bunch. Actually, there's a number of them that are sort of sleepers. And with that, I'll say they're great knives. They just haven't gotten the respect and recognition, maybe, that they deserve. This one is interesting because, first of all, it's by a designer, a young designer who I believe has only designed this one knife. I may be wrong. This is the 037. It's simply called the 037 by We Knives. Had a look at some notes there, but it's also called, so it's the Wii model, <laughs> uh, 910A 037 Flipper. So, um, as I was saying, it's designed by Kellen Bogardis, who's a Massachusetts native. I guess I should get the knife in front of us while I'm talking about it, right? It's extremely light. He designed it as a real usable EDC style knife. Of course, I see knives in other regards, meaning can they be used tactically as well? Uh, this can be both. It's extremely light by virtue of the fact that it's all carved out inside. It's got this crisscross honeycomb of milling that makes the knife how light well how light let's kind of wedge the scale in there well, that ain't gonna work we gotta wait for it now it's zeroed it's four ounces what's interesting is it's uh, 4.06 ounces and it's 4.03 I think inches on the blade fires like amazing has this great choke up here full finger choil and a full thumb ramp a little bit of jimping there not overly branded by any means I believe that is yep I believe that's Kellen Bogardis's um, insignia there. If I can get it in focus. I'd call it a drop point blade, certainly, with a swedge. Point on line. A little bit of uh, pretty good milling there that gives you some, um, some grip. Looking for the right words. It has a most interesting clip that's inset into a pocket. Still slides in the pants without any problem and certainly out of them very easily. And is one of the few titanium clips that is virtually deep carry, if not completely deep carry. So yes, a very light and useful you name it, utility or tactical knife, is in the upper range of prices at, I think, around 278 or so. 
a knife center and blade HQ. I think I got it for a little less. Not a drop shutty knife, but very smooth. Is on bearings. And here's another notable feature about it. Those two screws will separate the handle halves. And I'm not sure if you need to take that pivot out too or if it comes right off. I have not disassembled it. But those are some really unique features of this uh, blade. Is the inset clip. The heavy skeletonizing making it only four ounces. And the disassembly from the spine of the handle with those two screws. Anyway, check them out. Here's another, the Fornix. I don't know. I don't like saying that name. Sounds like something bad, but it's the Fornix. It actually does have a, what is it, um, geometrical term, geometrical meaning. And I think if you look at my review on this one, I will have stated that. We have a titanium clip that looks like a spring steel clip, but it's not. It is a pretty good gauge titanium. This was a limited run, and these are numbered. So this um, came, with a, came with a box and uh, uh, authenticity, so on and so forth. This is number 267 of 410. That's an odd number. Um, not sure. It's one of my favorite. I've seen a few reviews on it when it first came out, and then there was pretty much silence. Um, not particularly drop shutty, but again, smooth and on bearings. It's a it's a smaller knife. It's uh, some one of the smallest of the of the bunch here, and um, definitely can open it with a very short little flipper tab, or yes, with a middle finger flick. Although it's got a pretty good detent, got to sort of dig your thumb in there to get it. This hasn't been broken in much. This has sort of been sitting in the case since I got it. Reversible clip, which is kind of nice. You don't see on too many titanium knives, but they can do it with a spring-style clip. Handsome little knife. And I'm uh, not going to do that. Very, very, very subtle uh, branding on it. By the way, uh, getting back to the 037, that was M390 steel. This little guy here is 20 CV, CPM 20 CV, which is one of the reasons I was attracted to it. I like the higher end steels when I can get them. That brings it down to these three, and this one is the 617. No other name as far as I know. It's an amazing knife because if you can still get them on eBay from, I think, Ecop or one of those uh, eBay retailers, it's under $100. It's D2, yes. Nothing fancy with the steel, but it's a gorgeous knife. It's light. It's extremely usable for an EDC. You may or may not like the harpoon style blade. But it's got excellent jimping. It's got, and this one is a Desert Tan G10. They do come in a green and a black if you can find them. Nice slotted lanyard hole. That's titanium. Jimping on the pommel. Open construction otherwise. Two-tone blade. Really nice black, I think, DLC in a satin finished flat with these nice little accent marks there. That is the 617 by Wee. Um, very light. wonder if we could get a weight on this one. A little more pressure. 
Come on. Zero out. There we go. And we've got 4.4. Feels a lot lighter than that. I think I said that in a review as well. 4.4 ounces. Fantastic action. Drop shut action. Really nice. Titanium pocket clip. Get all of that for under 100 bucks. It's amazing. And the Ergos are great for a working knife. Uh, Zelrick, Todd Knife and Tool, on his YouTube channel, did a great review on this knife, by the way. You should check it out. Okay, we're getting to the Chimera. Got this one mainly for the looks, but it is an awesome blade. You can sort of fit your finger in there sideways in that choil, so it is usable to a degree. The Chimera, I believe, is a mythological creature with uh, like uh, parts of a lion and a snake and uh, several other creatures. You may know more about it than I do. I'm no expert on Greek mythology. And look at that, and these holes that go straight through. It's a fancy knife, yes. It is interestingly sculpted with a spanned backspacer. Lanyard hole in this weird, I don't know if it's weird or not, kind of an antique looking, broken up, uh, aged um, design. Brass underneath and black on the surface, so it kind of comes through with a, a worn look. But other than that, a very comfortable, usable knife, and I haven't seen too many reviews on this. It's been out for a long time. May have been discontinued, which is why I hadn't seen too many reviews. Titanium pocket clip, hardened steel insert, really beautiful pivot surround. And the Wii logo, and once again, minimal branding. And this one, I believe, is, um, and you've got to look real hard on Wii knives to find the steel. I'm going to guess that this one is, here's, whoa, check this out. Can you see that? That's the steel <laughs> on the flipper tab, S35VN. <laughs> it's crazy how they hide the steel and so many other markings. You really can't call these knives um, billboarded by any means. Finally, this is the Scopio by TNT Designs. Yep. TNT's been putting up a lot of his knives on uh, Instagram lately. Uh, they're beautiful designs, but uh, unfortunately he's not selling any of them and he's no lo either no longer making them or is in kind of a hiatus. This has got one of the nicest brassy looking stone washes on the handle of any knife that I've ever handled. And look at this scalloped, multifaceted, compound ground blade. Doesn't give any real advantage to the edge. The edge is pretty much consistent. The edge is not uh, multiple angled. Pretty much 20 CV on this one. Full closed back construction. Almost looks integral, but it's not. There's the seam. Hidden lanyard pin. Titanium pocket clip. Very nicely sculpted. He does a great job with his designs. It's kind of a medium-sized folder. So um, I can put the Benchmade Griptilian out here and do a few quick comparisons. See, we can zoom in just a little for those. So, about the same size as a Griptilian. We'll leave the Griptilian there. Size comparison on the Chimera is a significantly larger knife. This is a full 4-inch blade on the 617, so it's going to be bigger. 
And as I said, it's a full four inch blade slightly over on the O37 by Kellen Bogardis. And the Fornix is going to be smaller, I believe. Well, about the same. So the Fornix is about the same size as a Grippy. Didn't know that. Let's bring them all out again for the final showing. We've got the Wii Fornix Chimera 617 Scopio and the 037. 037 Scopio 617 Chimera and Fornix. There you go. The uh, underrated and perhaps forgotten stellar Wii knives. Hope you enjoyed this vid. Give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. We'll be back with you soon.